Hey everyone, my name is Luke Brown, one of the pastors here at Holland Chapel. We just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to Holland Chapel online. But before we get going with today's sermon, we just want to share a few things with you, our heart behind this resource. Uh, we want you to be plugged in to the family of God. So wherever this resource finds you, we do not want it to take the place of the privilege that we have as children of God to belong to the church, to be seen, to be known, to enjoy that precious fellowship. So we want to encourage you. This video, this sermon resource is not meant to replace that, but only as supplemental, something that can help you throughout the week in your pursuit of Jesus. So if at all possible, again, wherever this may find you, we want you to be plugged in to the family of God. Whether it's here at Holland Chapel or some other church in your community that preaches the Bible, we want you involved there. But if you can, we're privileged to be able to offer this resource to you and we hope that it finds you well and we hope that the preaching and the proclaiming of God's word is a blessing to you. Have a wonderful day. God bless. Church, are you thankful for the name of Jesus this morning? He's good. Uh, my name is Luke, one of the pastors here, and I just want to say thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. Uh, I do want to get you caught up on some recent events in my life. Um, I know that a lot of you dads uh, took your little princesses on uh, a little date night this past weekend. Anybody in this room do that? Any dads? Yeah, see the hands around here. This guy back here loved it, every minute of it. Um, and so I just want to say congratulations. I, and, and you might be thinking, well, Luke, like the whole world was posting uh, pictures of dads and their little girls. Where were you at, man? Where were you at, rock star dad? Well, here, let me give you a little background on that scenario. Church, about three or four weeks ago when my wife brought that to the table, she said, hey, uh, sign-ups are taking place. So I'm like, yes. I was away in Texas for a couple of years, and, and I would see all my friends do this, and I was like, man, I cannot wait to be able to take my little princesses to the dance. Man, I was just so excited about that. So, man, I, I set it all up. One night, it was right before at bedtime, and I was like, I'll, I'll get them separated, and I'll, I'll, I'll ask them both, right? So I, I go to my oldest bedroom, kneel down beside her bed, and I said, hey, baby, like, uh, here in a couple weeks, like, there's going to be this really awesome uh, Valentine's-type dance where you get to get dressed up like a princess, and daddy will be a prince, and, and we'll go on a date, and we'll dance, and we'll have a lot of fun. And, and then she looked at me cross-eyed, and she said, Dad, why would I do that? <laughs> Dagger. Any dads? Right? So I thought, well, she's, she's the oldest one. Maybe that, maybe that ship has sailed. So I'll go across the hall to the five-year-old's bedroom where, like, every day is a fairy tale to her. Anybody, anybody have one of those? Like, just dances everywhere, live. I said, this is an easy one. This is a softball. So I went to her room, and I knelt down beside her bed, and I said, hey, baby, like, hey, here in a couple weeks, there's going to be an opportunity for you to dress like a princess. And daddy's going to dress like a prince, and we're going on a date, and we'll dance, and it'll be a lot of fun. And she looked at me like a cow looking at a new gate. Go, Dad, why would I do that? <sighs> I have not been shot down like that since middle school, church. <laughs> and so all you dads that went and enjoyed that time, I really do hope it was a great night. But here's the kicker. They've never turned down an opportunity to go deer hunting, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm succeeding in one area, at least. Succeeding in one area. I hope you're ready to dive in to the third commandment. Have you been blessed by God's word so far in the series, church? Have you been challenged? Have you been refined? Have you been drawn closer to God? I pray that you have. So if you got your Bibles, I need you to go to Exodus chapter 20. We're going to look at the third commandment this morning. But before we do, let's look and see where we're at. Week one was all about who we worship. God says, it's me. Worship only me. Last week was really about, about how we worship. Are, are we, as children of God, tempted to, to put more things in front of him in our worship? That, that I need this to be able to worship him. That I need that to be able to worship him. And, and God's saying, I, I'm enough. And, and then Jesus takes it to the, the next level. And he says, you now, in me, through salvation, have the opportunity to worship in spirit and truth. And we can worship God anywhere, anytime that we want to through the precious blood of Jesus. What a privilege we have as his children to be able to approach him and worship him at any time. 
So much like the, the first two, we're, we're not so much reading a list of don'ts. We're, we're seeing what we are uh, prohibited and also what we are permitted to do, that God is allowing us to do certain things. And in the third commandment, it's absolutely no different. So go down to verse 7 as we look and see what the third law is and how God sets it up. He says, you must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Many people in this room know this verse by the King James or the New King James Version where it says, don't take the Lord's name in what church? Vain. Don't take his name in vain. And what you might have done is you might have read over the commandments and you've got to, to the third one and thought, week three, I'm going to walk in here and man, that's going to be good. Like I have not said his name in a cuss word in a really long time. I'm killing it. Anybody have that thought? Just be honest with me. Did you look at it and think that? No, you're not going to raise your hand to that in church. <laughs> what, what, what church? Let, 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 me, let me set something up. Really, really before we get there, the, the third commandment, has way more to do than just cussing. Did you hear that? There, there's so much more to the third commandment than just saying his name in a cuss word. It is a really large commandment with a lot of things for us to look at this morning as his children. Misusing his name is dishonoring him. He's, he's saying, I'm, I'm God. Respect my name. Why is God so serious about his name? So serious to the point that if you look at this commandment, he says, if you mistreat it, if you misuse it, this will not go unpunished. Why is he so serious about his name? Our, 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 names, our, our names matter. Like, I'm going to share a little story with you. Do y'all, y'all know who Deion Sanders is? Any sports fanatics in here? Like Deion Sanders. Do y'all remember a couple years ago? He's at Jackson State just making waves, right? Just changing the football scene in his conference. And I'll never forget this press conference he was at. He was kind of going off on a rant, on a tangent. He was like, why, why in our conference do our boys not have their names on the back of their jerseys? Y'all remember that? Anybody see that? Like, why? why? If it's a money thing, I'm a wealthy guy. I, I'll, I'll put money towards it and we'll put their name on the back of their jerseys. Like when they're playing, when they score a touchdown, they want their mom to know who it was. They want their grandma to see it or their, their uncle. Like they're proud of their name. They want to show it off. Like names matter. Names are really important. You may have been like a really traditional family where like bearing that last name was a big deal. Anybody? And maybe you were growing up saying, hey, know whose name you're wearing, right? Anybody that way? Like, no, hey, our, our name means something. Listen, church, n- names matter. And it's going to be on the screen. God's name matters. God's name very much matters. Names are important. The name Yahweh, which is used here in the law, gets set up in Exodus chapter 3. What Yahweh means when God says that, he says, I am who I am. God is the only one that can establish himself as that, as the I am. Yahweh means I am. God is serious about his name. He starts establishing who he is by what he calls himself. God's name very much matter. And what we see in scripture is when names are given to people in the Bible, they are descriptive of their reality. Their names define who they are. So God's name describes who he is. God's name, listen to me church, it's his reality. It's who God is. Exodus 34 verse 14 It says, you must worship no other gods, for the Lord, whose very name is Jealous, is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. God is a jealous God. He he wants all of you. That is his reality. His name describes who he is. In Isaiah 57, 15, they won't be on the screen. We're going to look at them fast, so write them down if you want these. Isaiah 57, 15 says, Thus says the one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. Church, listen, that's his reality. God is holy. Isaiah 9, verse 6, it says, To us a child is born, to us a son 
is given. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Listen, church, that's his reality. That's who he is. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Listen, church, his reality is Savior, Yeshua. That's what it means, the God who saves. That's his reality. Math, or Revelation 19, 13, and 16 says this about him. The name by which he is called is the Word of God. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Listen, church, that's who he is. That's his reality. God's name is who he is. So when he writes in the third commandment, do not misuse my name. He's serious about it. Because all of these things that we just read, that's who he is. God is very serious about his name. His name very much matters. So when he speaks in the third commandment and he says, don't, don't speak of my name in vain, it really means don't do anything. Listen to me, church. Don't do anything. Don't speak anything that would distort or misrepresent my name. That's what God is saying. So we, we, we read kind of the, the, the New King James Version says vain. What's the meaning of that word? In context, the word vain means do not empty his name. You should write that down. Don't empty his name. God is serious. Don't empty his name. So when you and I, as children of God, take his name in vain, what we are doing is emptying it of all of its infinite value and worth. Everything that we just read in Scripture, when we misuse, when we mistreat his name, we are emptying it of all that it is. That's why he is very serious about how we represent him. And it's no secret, church, that a lost world, the world in which we live, the culture in which we are a part of, wants nothing more than to belittle the name of God. The culture in which we live wants nothing more than to defame the name of God. The culture in which we live wants nothing more than to deny his existence. They want to erase his name because his name matters. And what he's telling us, his children, if you claim me, don't misuse my name. Don't mistreat my name, but here's where we're at. We've allowed said culture to desensitize us to his name. And we live in an OMG culture, don't we? And before you know it, the people who claim him as father misuse his name, and we don't even realize that we're doing it. We live in this OMG culture, and it's no wonder that a lost and dying world is not coming to him when his very own children are responsible for defaming his name. Now listen, I want to say it in a soft way. But if that's you, you're caught up in this OMG culture, you need to repent. You need to ask God to forgive you. You need to say, I'm sorry for taking the precious name of God and defaming it, inserting it into a conversation about what you're going to have for dinner or who asked you out or what just happened in a ball game. Be careful how you treat God's name. He's very serious about it. He says, this will not go unpunished, child of God. Are you holding his name high? Now, we also live in this culture. There's going to be something on the screen. It's a lot of icons, social media icons. And there's no denying it, church. This is where we're at the bulk of our time. Anybody want to give amen to that? Like, that's just where we're at. 
We're on social media all the time. Is your presence on social media just as important as what you'd say in person, church? Do they hold the same amount of weight? There's a certain amount of anonymity we feel online, don't we? That somehow my actions online aren't representative of my real life. And here's what happens. This is what we fall prey to as children of God. When we see something online, when we see somebody's activity, somebody's lifestyle that we know that is opposite of what God expects of his children, here's what happens. The people of God, they hit like on it. Here's what happens. The people of God share it. The people of God write under that activity, awesome job, congratulations, happy for you. And what we are doing as children of God is we are approving of what God detests. We should not approve of what God detests. Every time that a child of God puts their stamp of approval on behaviors that are not permitted by God, we are emptying him of his name, church. We are saying that that's okay. Great job. We are defaming the name of God because of who we represent and how we represent him. So absolutely, your online behavior matters. That's you. If the society in which we live know that you claim God, be careful what you do online. It's just as important as what you say in here. Don't defame the name of God. Don't empty him of his name. Remember, don't approve what God detests. I want to insert something else here about our thought life. So we've talked about words, we've talked about actions, but our thoughts. You think, Luke, how can, how can my thoughts defame God? How can my thoughts empty him of his name? Have you ever had this thought when an illness strikes or a tragedy happens? Have you ever thought, like, I know he's God, but can he really do this? I know he's God, but can he really heal this? But by you doubting him, doubting him of who he is, what he says about himself is emptying his name. So you see, the third commandment, church, is so much more than just a cuss word. Is our life being lived in a way that's defaming God of who he is? Be careful of all these things. He's very, very serious about it. I want you to write this down. It won't be on the screen, but I want you to write this down. The opposite of vain, right? The opposite of emptying is hallowing. Hallowing. Not Halloween. Hallow. Hallowing God. That's the opposite of vanity. What does Jesus say about this very subject? What does Jesus say about the third commandment? To hallow means to honor as holy. That is the end game of our life, church. God saved you so that your life would bring his name, honor, and glory. That's the end game, to hallow his name. What does Jesus say about it? Matthew chapter 6. I want you to go there. Matthew chapter 6, 9 through 13. This is going to be read from the NIV version. Matthew chapter 6, 9 through 13. Many of us know it as the Lord's Prayer. So what he says. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, what church? Hallowed be your name. Do you, do you notice where this comes in the prayer? Do, do you notice how Jesus starts this moment? By revering the name of God, by holding it high. And then all of this other stuff follows. He says, your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So the very start of the model prayer, he's saying to the worshipers, to the followers of God, hallow his name, revere his name, Respect his name. Honor his name. Then all of this other stuff. He's saying if his kingdom does not come, his name 
will not be hallowed. If his will is not done, his name will not be hallowed. If we don't have food to keep us alive, our voice will disappear from the hallowing of God's name here on this earth. If our sins are not forgiven, we'll we'll perish in hell where no one holds high the name of God. And if we are not protected from the evil one, we will join in a lost world's defaming of the name of God. All of this stuff matters bent on that phrase to hallow his name. Everything that we do in our life points to bringing God honor. Jesus sets all of this up. You see how important the third commandment is? We just read over it as don't cuss. But the third is the foundation for a life that brings honor and glory to God. And Jesus is saying, hallow God's name. Honor God's name. So what do I do? We need to honor God with our words and actions. That's going to be on the screen. This is kind of our action step for today. We've seen what the third commandment is. And now we need to honor God with words and actions. I want you to go to Romans chapter 12. We're going to read verse 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. This next part is so important. The kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. So how do I live my life? You might be thinking, wow, okay, that's, that's a lot of stuff there. That, that, that's a lot of things to keep. That's a lot of behavior to, to straighten up. How, how, do, how do I do this? How do I live a life in such a way that everything that I do, say, and think honors the name of God? How do I do that? What scripture tells us is that we ought to be people that worship God in our very life. We should live a life of worship. When you and I live a life of worship, when we wake up in the morning, we we saturate our minds and our thoughts and our hearts on the word of God. We, We don't have to be worried about our actions to follow that day. We've, we've worshipped God and our hearts are going to be set on him. That the actions that I, that I do during the day will, will be in such a way that brings him honor and glory. That, that when I wake up in the morning, I pray and I align my heart with his. That the thoughts that I have will bring him honor and glory. That if I wake up in the morning and I see what his word says, that my speech will be in such a way that honors him. A life of worship is how we live a life that honors God. A life that hallows his name. A life that brings his name infinite value. As a child of God, that's the end game for us. Is to live a life that's pleasing to him. And if you, you remember the second commandment, Jesus says to worship in spirit and in truth. When we do that, we live a life that honors God's name. Are you willing to live a life of worship so that you can make sure your life honors his name. Matthew chapter 15, I want you to go there. There's a lot of, a lot of wise things that Christ says. Matthew chapter 15, we're going to look at 3 through 10, and then we're going to jump down to verse 18. He says a lot here, so bear with me. Jesus replied, and why do you By your traditions, violate the direct commandments of God. For instance, God says, honor your father and mother. And anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father or mother must be put to death. But you say it is all right for people to say to their parents, sorry, I can't help you. For I have vowed to give to God what I would have given to you. In this way, you say they don't need to honor their parents. And so you cancel the word of God for the sake of your own tradition. You hypocrites. 
Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce. For they teach man-made ideas as God, as commands from God. Verse 10, then Jesus called to the crowd to come in here. Listen, he said, and try to understand. It's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Jump down to verse 18. But the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. Listen, church, honoring the name of God or dishonoring the name of God is a matter of the heart. Where's your heart at? Is your heart focused on worshiping God? Or is your heart distant from him? If your heart is not pursuing God, then your life is not going to be lived in a way that honors God. You're going to misuse his name. You're going to empty him of his name. Jesus is concerned about the condition of your heart. Where is it at? And it's so wise here. Jesus said, I can tell you where your heart's at just by listening to the words that come out of your mouth. Child of God, we, we can see where your heart's at by the actions that you take, by the, by the words that we speak, by our interactions on social media, by how we love and how we care for each other or the lack thereof. Do we need, can we see what's in our heart by, by, by what we do? Is that a direct representation of the life that's been changed? Jesus is saying, worship. Have a heart that's focused on me. And if your heart is focused on me, you'll live a life that will bring me honor and glory. Remember, church, that God is a very jealous God. And that's a good thing. We oftentimes insert jealousy in a negative context. To understand that God is jealous for you, for all of you, for your mind, for your heart, for every ounce of you is a good thing. He wants all of you. Are you living a life that empties him of his name or a life that's bringing him honor and glory? Here's what I know, church. If we've lived a life, if we are pulled into temptation, whether it be our words, our thoughts, or our actions, to misuse or misrepresent the name of God, he can and will forgive. Do you, do you believe that, church? I'm, in our series, this, this couch is, is over here. If you remember week one, where God is like, hey, my child, go, go sit on the couch. Let me talk to you. Well, I feel like the Lord is, he may not be talking to you, but he's talking to me. So I'm going to go sit down on the couch, and I'm going to read his word as he speaks to me. Exodus 34 We're going to look at 6, and we're going to read the first part of verse 7. It says, the Lord passed in front of Moses, calling out Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy. I'm slow to anger. And filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity. What does that word mean? Bad stuff. Rebellion and sin. If you're like me, when I read the Ten Commandments and I got to the third one and he makes that strong statement at the end, I will not let this go unpunished. Did anybody sit up straight in their seat in that moment? Just me? So we, we, we started this message with that, with that bookend of, man, he's, he's serious. 
And he's not going to let it slide. He, he presents a strong warning to his children. My name matters. My name is holy. My name is everything. Treat it with respect. If you don't, I'm not going to let it slide. But then the very same God says this. I'll forgive you. Does that bring you hope, church? It brings me a lot of hope. So we started with this bookend of he's coming after you. He, he wants what's best for you. And then we're going to end with he can and will forgive you if you ask him. So church, I don't know where you're at this morning. I, I don't know if this is the area in your life in which you're most tempted to turn your back on the Lord in your, in your speech or your actions or your thoughts. All you have to do is ask God to forgive you. And his word is true. It says he will. And I'm thankful for that. Are you respecting the name of God? I want to lead you, uh, leave you with a, with, a, with a kind of a coffee cup verse. Proverbs 18, verse 10. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. Are you thankful that the Lord is a strong fortress church? Let's not treat his name like a crumbling shack. Bring honor to the name of God. Let me pray for you. God, we love you. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the instruction that it gives. There's no question that the law given in the Old Testament is tough. And God, help us to understand that the reason it's so difficult is because it's, it's dealing with us, our, our heart issue at its core. Each, each one deals with how we, as your children, are so bent towards sin. And you, by, by being such a loving father, makes us aware of the sin. And you're calling us out of it. It's not easy to read. It's not easy to hear. It's not easy to preach. But God, help us through the power of your son, Jesus, to recognize when we have done wrong and to love you enough to turn and live in a way that brings you honor. Help us, Lord. Thank you for your son, Jesus. And we ask everything in his precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Church, as always, we want to invite you to respond. And I believe that we all have heard and understand from God's word this morning that this applies to all of us. We all need to respond as we take God's name. The Bible says don't take it in vain. It means to carry. We carry his name with us where we go. And so maybe your response this morning is just to, to commit to, to not emptying out God's name. Maybe your response this morning is to repent and turn away from the, the way that you've treated God's name. But regardless, I know that everyone in here can take a response step from this message this morning. God's name matters. We're to honor it. We're to hallow it. We do that with our words and our actions. What a difference we could make in this community if we all go out into this world this week and we treat God's name like the strong tower that it is. That could be revival, church. That's, it starts with us. And, it, and, and, and so I want to invite you, I want to ask you uh, to take God's name with respect and the honor that it deserves this week. Uh, this morning, if you're a first-time guest, don't forget to stop by and see our friends Ryan and Penny in the Connect Corner. Also, if you need to respond, you want to talk to someone, you want some support, some encouragement along this journey of following Jesus, they would love to speak with you as well, and there'll be pastors available to help you take your next step 
in following Jesus. A few announcements that we need to leave you with that you need to be aware of. First of all, the Lyft Tour, otherwise known around here as Reality Weekend, is two weekends away. So this is a church-wide event. It's a community-wide effort for student discipleship, student evangelism. And so we need your help. Uh, we need host homes, which means allowing some students to stay at your house on Friday night and Saturday night. We need transportation. We need food. We need all of that. And we need your students to sign up. You can do that on the Holland Chapel website. You click about and click students, and there's the registration there. Don't forget, if you've already signed them up, to also click the waiver so that they can uh, get that filled out and save us some trouble on the opening night of this weekend. It's a wonderful weekend. Two Sundays from now, this place is going to be full of students and their parents and and we're going to be capping off a wonderful weekend, and we would love for you and your family to be a part of that weekend as well. Next week is Holland Chapel's next membership class. If your next step is uh, is leaning into church membership, understanding what that looks like, maybe telling uh, Holland Chapel, hey, me and my family are all in uh, with Holland Chapel and on mission for Jesus, then this, this class is for you. Please let us know by filling out that online connect card or calling the church office tomorrow morning so we can be looking for you and your family next Sunday at membership class. And then in a couple of weeks is baptism class. If your next step in following Jesus is is uh, publicly professing your uh, faith in him and baptism is how we do that, uh, we would love for you to be a part of baptism class. I think you will enjoy it. I think it will be a blessing to you. So let us know if you would like to participate in baptism baptism class. Tomorrow from 3.30 to 5, there is a HC Kids event for preschool and kindergarten, a Bible story workshop that will be taking place in the HC Kids room. And so just drop your kiddos off there at the front door tomorrow at 3.30. And then next Sunday, we'll be taking communion as we look at the fourth commandment. So we're going to already looking forward to that day of worship. But church, I want to invite you to have a great week of worship as we hold Old high the name of God. You guys are dismissed.